Hey everyone, it's Tommy from the Blue Crease Network, and today I'm extremely excited to be able to show you guys the new CCM Premier Pro line. So, let's get started. So let's start with the leg pads, since that is what I get the most questions about. Now, I really like these leg pads, and there are some definite differences between these and the old E-Flex 2 line and the old XLT line. So let's run through those really quick. So, first of all, I want to talk about the sizing, because I was a little surprised when I received these. I ordered my usual 35 plus 2, and yet they are noticeably higher um, or longer than my old E-Flex 2s and my Coho's, which are also 35 plus 2. Now, I think the biggest reason for that is because this boot is much higher, and it's also much stiffer. So this is a stiffer pad overall, especially in in comparison to the E-Flex 2s, which of course they're called Extreme Flex 2 pads, so of course they're going to have a lot of flex. Now, these, however, do not. So if you remember back from my unboxing video, they were very, very stiff. And that boot never really did open up at all, so that's still a very, very stiff boot. Now, I don't mind that because I don't ask my pads to flex a lot in the boot. I let it ride very high on my skate, and that way it you know gets you a little more thigh rise in that five hole, so I don't mind that at all. But I know that some other people like a very flexible boot, and this pad is definitely not going to give you that. Now, again, I don't mind that, but you might. Now, in the knee area, you can see it did open up a little bit, so it is a little bit more flexible, but again, this pad was designed to be stiff, so you definitely have to know that going in. Now, let's get back to that boot. This boot is definitely higher than the E-Flex 2, and that's where it really gets its additional height. So if you are ordering the Premier Pads and you're coming from the E-Flex 2 line, I would probably suggest getting um, one less inch in that base pad. So for example, if I got 35 plus 2, I would probably want to go with a 34 plus 2 in the future. Now, that said, even though it's noticeable that they are higher in my videos, I didn't really mind it and I didn't really notice it. And there's good reason for that as well. So let's talk about the weight for a little bit. Now, these pads definitely feel heavier than especially my E-Flex 2 pads, but really heavier than a lot of the pads that I've used in the past couple years. And really that's because of how the weight is concentrated in this pad. So the way that you're usually going to figure out the weight of the pad, of course, if you're not wearing them, is going to be by picking them up probably right in the middle. And they feel really, really heavy. Interestingly enough, if you grab them from the outside, they don't feel as heavy. And if you feel it from the inside, it definitely feels very light. And that's because of the way that the weight is concentrated in the pad. So I'm going to flip it over here. And the weight is mostly concentrated in the middle of the leg channel. So what this does is even though it feels heavier sometimes, it's actually much better balanced. So even though this is a slightly bigger pad than I'm used to, and it also feels a little bit heavy sometimes, I didn't feel that when I was actually out on the rink. So when I'm doing my slides, um, I didn't feel like they were heavier. Uh, when I was going into the reverse VH or the VH, I didn't feel like it was difficult maneuvering around, um, which was very interesting since they are a little bit higher. So I was definitely concerned about that. But because of the concentration of the weight, I really didn't experience that at all. Now, since a lot of people ask me, how do they slide? I'm pretty much just going to tell you that they slide very well. Uh, because in comparison to the E-Flex 2s, I really didn't notice that these slid any better or any worse. And the E-Flex 2s were already some of the best sliding pads that I've ever used. So I don't have any concerns about this one at all. And if you've watched any of my game videos, you can definitely see that these slide extremely well. And I think that that's really due to this very flat surface on the inner gusset of the calf, which works out really well because you're going to slide on this small portion right here and there's nothing that's really going to uh, create any friction on the ice so you're going to end up sliding on a very small uh, part of this inner gusset which works really well now another impressive part of this pad is this knee lock area now you guys know that I order these custom and I specifically get a knee lock that I can remove and that way I can show you guys how to remove that knee lock but the reason I do that is so that I can have my socks just go straight on the nylon here and also gives me enough room for my oversized knee guards. However, even in the stock CCM Premier pad, this allows you a lot of room for your knee guards. Now, another thing I really like about this area is they've added this pro flap right here. Some people call it the Luongo flap. Um, and this offers you a little more extra 
um, blocking area on those close in shots. Um, I've always just wanted to try it. I don't think I've even had a puck hit it yet, but it's kind of neat that they've now added that since I've always wanted it for years. But nonetheless, the knee lock is pretty great. Now, another thing they've brought over from that E-Flex 2 line is the removable boot strap. Now, I only tried it a couple times, and I really didn't feel that much of a difference, and plus I keep my boot strap extremely loose, but nonetheless, you can remove this boot strap if you prefer that setup. Now, last but not least, a lot of you are going to be asking me for comparisons to the E-Flex 2 line, or would I recommend these over the E-Flex 2 line? And my answer to that is always, it depends on the kind of pad you want. So the E-Flex 2 pads are going to allow for a very soft rebound, so that you're able to cover that rebound pretty quickly. Now, the CCM Premier line is going to allow those very active rebounds. So if you're a butterfly goalie who plays that typical uh, butterfly style, much like Flurry, uh, where you don't mind that those rebounds are going to pop right back out into the slot or hopefully a little bit further to allow you more time to set up for the next shot, these are, might be your pad because that is that active rebound. This front here is extremely stiff. Um, there is no give whatsoever in the front of this pad. So those rebounds end up just hitting this and then going straight off. So if that's the kind of pad that you prefer, this is definitely the line for you. Or if you prefer those softer rebounds, definitely go with the E-Flex 2s. Now as far as the glove goes, there really aren't that many changes, and I don't mind that. Now you guys have probably seen those videos before where I've gone through the Coho and the E-Flex 2 line and those very similar styles. And you know that I love this construction, and this is a construction that I have used for years, and so I'm very used to it. So if you are definitely used to that Reebok or the CCM style, this is definitely going to be the glove for you. They really didn't change that much, and I don't mind that at all because I am used to that style. But one thing that they did change is that they've added D3O foam right here in the palm and also on the thumb side. So what that allows you to do is give you more protection while remaining soft so that you're still able to control the puck really well. So you can see that it closes extremely well, very easily. And this is with one break-in method, which you guys have already seen. And you can see that it opens extremely wide so that it keeps all those pucks inside uh, the trapper. Now, and you can see right here that I've actually taken a couple pucks off the D3O foam, and I have yet to have a stinger on this glove, and I've probably used it, I don't know, 15, 20 times, something like that, probably even a little bit more, not even a single stinger yet. Now, as far as the fit of the glove goes, it is extremely similar to the typical CCM or the Reebok line. So that is a very snug fit and extremely comfortable fit. So if you're one of those goalies who's maybe coming from another brand and maybe you're using a golfing glove or a batter's glove inside your glove, you probably aren't going to need that inside your CCM or your Reebok glove. And that's definitely true for the CCM Premier glove. So just to kind of run through it in case you're not familiar with the construction of this glove, you can see here by opening this up, there are several other areas inside the back of the glove where you can adjust uh, the comfort and the feel of your glove. So we of course have the wrist strap right here and we also have a strap right here and then a finger uh, strap up here. Now up here it tends to be a little tight um, but I don't mind that. I do have smaller hands so I prefer that very snug feel um, but I know that some people might want a little bit looser. You can certainly do that with your straps here. Now you probably won't be able to see this too much, but on the inside of the glove, they also use sure grip material. So you can see it's right here, and it also extends back into the glove, so that it makes sure that you get a very nice grip on this glove, even when you're sweating mid-game. Now just like the glove, they pretty much didn't change a lot on the blocker either. And I don't mind that because I really like the construction of your typical Lefebvre style blocker. So just to kind of run through it since I do it every time, here is the balance of the blocker and you can see extremely well balanced. So it definitely has that center balance and that's despite all of this protection and material over there on the sidewall. So I absolutely love that. I like a very nicely balanced blocker and you can see it definitely does that. Now, talking about the protection just for a little bit because that is where they changed up one slight area. Now, of course, you're not going to get a lot of vibration through any shots here. I haven't received one ding or vibration or shock or anything through the front um, of your blocker. Over here on the sidewall, you can see 
I haven't really taken that many shots off the side, which is very different for me. Um, I typically take quite a few shots off the side, um, and I've yet to have any stingers or dings or anything like that over on the side either. So this type of a blocker and this construction allows for a lot of protection, especially because there's just so much pad up here. There's a little pillow in here, uh, more protection right here. It's just fantastic when it comes to protection. Now, that said, they did add um, a little area. They added a little bit of D3O foam. You can see it's orange right here at the tip of the index finger. So if I put my hand in again, and let's say if I was gripping my stick, my finger might be exposed a little bit. And so you can see if that puck comes up here, what that D3O foam is going to do, it allows enough flexibility that I can get a really nice fit and a nice grip on my stick. But the second that puck comes in and tries to hit, it's going to become extremely hard and it's gonna protect my finger. So I think that was a really smart move to go ahead and add that D3O foam right there, even though I've yet to get hit right there, but I'm sure some of you guys have. Now, one of the other benefits to your typical Lefebvre construction blocker is this extremely open cuff. And I like a very mobile cuff. And so you can see here, I've even taken out the strings right here. And I also tend to uh, open this wrist strap up as much as possible. So if you really like that open cuff right here, you can see it doesn't extend here like the old coho line did. Um, it just connects straight to the blocker over here. There is a ton of mobility. What that allows you to do is you still get a little bit of protection up here and there's quite a bit of foam in there to uh, make sure that your wrist is protected. But at the same time, it's going to allow you to stick handle much more easily. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you have any questions whatsoever, definitely let me know and I can tell you my experiences. And then at the same time, definitely check out my other videos because as you can see, especially as of late, I've been using this gear a lot and I'm sure I'm going to be using it a ton in the future. So if you ever want to see this gear in action, I'll put a couple links below so that you guys can see that. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe. And again, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll be sure to respond. So. Good luck, and I'll see you out on the ice.